Welcome to the Color and Chaos Podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in today. My name is Jonah Fair and I'm recording from Macomb, Michigan. Macomb, Michigan is about 20 miles north of Detroit. And so that's where I'm at right now recording this. No matter where this finds you, if this is your first time being a part of this podcast or you've been a part of this podcast before, whether you jumped in through iTunes or Spotify, Google Play Music Store, iHeart, YouTube, no matter where you are at right now partaking in this, it is a complete honor and privilege that you are here. When we look at chaos and we try to look through our own eyes and our own understanding and our own strength, we won't see any color. If anything, we'll see just more of a reason to numb ourselves and run away from it. But instead of doing that, this podcast exists as a cry to lean into our creator, savior, sustainer, to cry out to him and invite him into the process and acknowledge that, Lord, only through you can there be a color in this chaos. And so that's what this podcast exists for, and that's the cry of my heart. So again, no matter where this finds you, the best of times or the worst of times, it would be an honor for me to pray for you to invite the Lord to walk in your heart and my heart as we walk through this week's episode. So here, let us pray, and then we'll jump into it. All right. Lord God, we look to you. We thank you for who you are. Lord, for those right now that are listening or watching this, that they yet don't have a relationship with you, or maybe they have a lot of hostility built up towards you. Lord, may we at least acknowledge that you are present right now amongst this this space, this time that we have together. And Lord, you are with us no matter what we go through, the best of times or the worst of times. But Lord, sometimes it takes us going through difficulty in order for us to see you and to seek you. So Lord, we want to see you and we want to seek you today. Lord, be with those that have heavy hearts right now, those that are going through pain or trauma or some type of mourning or grief or confusion. Lord, please just become real and relevant in their lives and let them know that you exist and that you care and you are passionately in pursuit of our hearts more than anything or anyone. We need you, Lord, and we're nothing without you. Have your will and way through this podcast. Move me to the side and speak through me today. We need you. In your name we pray and we surrender. Amen. For the last three to four years, I've been having reoccurring nightmares of of like a one-sided pursuit. I don't know if you can relate with that Um, If you've ever felt any type of unrequited love where you have just pursued after somebody or love somebody and and they just have not reciprocated that, it's painful, it's difficult, it's 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 a trauma in its own way. But I've been having these nightmares for a long time now. It's I mean, I've talked about it on this podcast before, if you've been following, um, then you know that I've, t- I've talked about this before, but I've just had nightmares of this just pursuing someone, but not really having anything back. And it, it, was, it was a couple of days ago that I had another one of these dreams. And every single time I have one of these dreams, when, when I'm in the dream, I, I don't wake myself up because I'm like, you know, my heart's a pursuer. But eventually, it, it's always like this cycle. I'll, I'll eventually wake myself up because I'm starting to realize, wait, this is a dream. Why am I going through this torture? You know, if this isn't even real. And so I woke up the other day and I had another one of those dreams. So I did what I always do. I always just kind of bring it to the Lord and say, Lord, okay, I don't know why I'm having this dream, but I have I have a faith. You know, I have a trust, Lord, that you want to show me something through this, that you're not going to waste this, even though it's not is not pleasurable. It's not something I would wish upon anybody. Lord, here I am going through it again. So Lord, what is it that you want me to see through this? And so recently I've been going through the book of Matthew and and I, I was brought to Matthew 13. And, and again, I was just being honest with the Lord, just crying out to him saying, Lord, you know, I don't know why I keep having this dream of pursuing and, and it's just not going anywhere. And, and my, and my attention went automatically to, okay, Lord, you know, I know I'm wired as a pursuer, but Lord, you are the ultimate pursuer. And you pursue out of more than anything on this planet or anyone on this planet. So, Lord, these feelings that I'm having, I recognize that, Lord, you can relate with these feelings of pursuing and nothing coming through with it. That there's just a hardness there. And and so, Lord, ultimately, you are the pursuer. So I'm just meditating on that. I'm reflecting on that. I'm, I'm spending time in his word just saying, okay, Lord, just show me you know, help me not reject you <laughs> like I'm always rejected in my dreams. And as I was doing that, again, I was brought to Matthew 13. 
And this is what Matthew 13 says, specifically verse 3. I want to read verse 3 down to 12. Jesus, sometimes he'll tell a parable and then he'll break it down for his disciples. And this is one of them, thankfully. And so here, we're going to jump into Matthew 13, verse 3. And so this is what Jesus said. He told many stories in the form of parables, such as this one. Listen, a farmer went out to plant some seeds. As he scattered them across his field, some seeds fell on a footpath, and the birds came and ate them. Verse 5, other seeds fell on shallow soil with underlying rock. These seeds sprouted quickly because the soil was shallow. But the plants soon wilted under the hot sun, and since they didn't have deep roots, they died. Other seeds fell among thorns that grew up and choked out the tender plants. Still, other seeds fell on fertile soil, and they produced a crop that was 30, 60, and even 100 times as much as has been planted. Anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. Verse 10, his disciples came and asked him, why do you use parables when you talk to people? Verse 11, he replied, you are permitted to understand the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but others are not. To those who listen to my teaching, more understanding will be given and they will have an abundance of knowledge. But for those who are not listening, even what little understanding they have will be taken away from them. This is why I use parables. He goes on to continue and he starts to bring their attention back towards a, a passage in Isaiah. In the passage of Isaiah, he says, the reason why people don't hear me is because they have a hardened heart. So here, let's go continue on as Jesus breaks down this parable and what the meaning of it is. Verse 18, this is what Jesus says. Now listen to the explanation of the parable about the farmer planting seeds. The seed that fell on the footpath represents those who hear the message about the kingdom and don't understand it. Then the evil one comes and snatches away the seed that was planted in their hearts. The seed on the rocky soil represents those who hear the message and immediately receive it with joy. But since they don't have deep roots, they don't last long. They fall away as soon as they have problems or are persecuted for believing God's word. Verse 22. The seed that fell among the thorns represent those who hear God's word, but all too quickly the message is crowded out by all the worries of this life and the lure of wealth, so no fruit is processed. The seed that fell on good soil represents those who truly hear and understand God's word, and it produces a harvest of 30, 60, or even 100 times as much that have been planted. So again, I'm, I'm reading this passage. I'm thinking about the dream that I had. I'm, I'm praying. I'm saying, Lord, help my heart respond to you when you are pursuing after me. The, the words that stick are the words that hold value, that hold weight. And especially when it comes to your word, Lord, it has to go through my heart first. So not only are there seeds, but there's also soil. There's also soil. And so this is what Jesus says in Matthew 13, verse 44. And as I'm reading this, Think about what is in the soil. So here we go. This is Matthew 13, verse 44. Jesus says this, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure that a man discovered hidden in a field. In his excitement, he hid it again and sold everything he owned to get enough money to buy the field. Jesus goes on. He says this, Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant on the lookout for choice pearls. When he discovered a pearl of great value, he sold everything he owned and bought it. In my dream, it's a, it's, it's a specific situation that I walk through with someone. So it's not just this just random dream that I have of pursuit, but there's a person there. And, and when I think back on the experience through the relationship, through that person, through everything going on with that, it came down to a moment within that relationship where I either had to be obedient to what I felt and the pursuit that I constantly wanted to do, or I had to be obedient to what I felt like the Lord was telling me to do, which is to give it to him and allow him to do something with it that I can't do through my manipulation and control. And so I was thinking about that and thinking about this idea of seed and soil and, and all this other stuff. And then it came to my realization that, Lord, whenever we are obedient to you, it may not look like it in the moment, but there will always be a reward, a treasure that comes through obedience. Whether it's here in this kingdom or it's a kingdom to come. 
but there's always a reward in obedience. And, 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 and as I was just thinking about the reward of obedience, I was thinking, Jesus, you are a treasure of greater value than my questions, my regrets, and my fears. Jesus, you are worth more than anything that I can give up in order to attain a closer walk with you, a closer intimacy with you. It may seem reckless to people on the outside of how this man is acting when he was giving everything he had to buy this field. That might seem very reckless, but it wasn't reckless because in reality, he wasn't just throwing everything away for something so frivolous. He was actually investing. Reckless abandon is not reckless when you know the value of what it is that you are trying to gain. There is a kingdom that goes beyond this kingdom right here. And Jesus talks about that. He breaks it down in the parable of the seeds and the parable right now of the field. And Jesus is reminding us that there's a kingdom. There is a kingdom where he is in the, in, in the ruling seat, a, a kingdom of heaven, a kingdom that we were created for, a kingdom that we long for, a kingdom that this world does not represent, a kingdom without death, a kingdom without sin. So Jesus is saying that this is what the kingdom is like, but there's so many obstacles in between that kingdom coming here to earth and taking root within your heart. This man, he gave away everything that he had. Why? Because the value of what he was given away for was much more than anything that he previously had. He knew the value. Therefore, it wasn't reckless. See, in between the soil and the seed, there's something that happens in between his obedience And in this parable, there's two types of different people going on. There's one person who accidentally discovers it. So the treasure wasn't something that he was even looking for. It wasn't even something that he thought he needed. The treasure was something that came as a result of him just walking through a field. It doesn't say any indication that he was looking for this, but it said that he discovered it. So here's the first man. He discovers a treasure. But then the second man is a man who was on the lookout for choice pearls. So there's two types of different things that can happen within our day-to-day lives. There is sometimes that we go out looking for something and we find something. But there's also sometimes that we're not necessarily looking for anything, but it finds us. But in both cases, there was a treasure Even when he wasn't looking for something and even when he was looking for something, they came across a treasure. And so the seed of God's word is constantly being spread. Even through this podcast right now, you may not have been looking for what what we're talking about here in this podcast, but it came across you. So now whenever we come across something, we have a choice, a response of what we do with it. So not only is the seed, the word of God, that God is pursuing after your heart and my heart 24-7, just throughout everything that we go through, not only is God pursuing after us, but there's also something going on with our soil. And the question is, what's in your soil? What's the soil of your heart today? Well, we've talked about in this podcast for many weeks now, but one of the soils that we got going on is this, this whole idea of the unknown, There's a lot of unknown and reminders that we don't know what's to come, whether it be through the death and the decay going on through this virus or whether it be even even in your community that there's still brokenness. Maybe it's even in your own household or even in your own heart that you're recognizing a, 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 a brokenness within you. Maybe it's a selfishness. Maybe it's a selfishness of other people around you, no matter what it is. Everything that we go through through our day produces a soil within us that will either facilitate and encourage a growth through the seed of God that is planted through his word, or the soil starts to get hardened through all the hurt and frustration and maybe bitterness and and, and anxiety and worry and fear that starts to take root. When the seed of God's word meets the soil of our heart, what happens As I was just thinking about that throughout that day of just saying, Lord, okay, Lord, I can rest in obedience to you. I may not have all the answers of why certain things happened or or, or why certain things are still happening, but Lord, I can rest when there's obedience to you. And, And there's another thing that came to my mind as I was thinking about that. 
in between me moving from South Carolina up here to Michigan, there was a lot of moments of obedience that had to happen. And at the moment, it didn't make sense. It didn't make sense leaving comfort or security in order to go to somewhere that was unknown. I didn't come up here to Michigan for a job. I didn't come up here for any other reason, but that there was a burden within me that I knew that, okay, Lord, this has to be you because I don't know why I can't get rid of this idea of Michigan, this thought of Michigan. My heart started being broken over the needs of Michigan, even before I knew anybody here. And so when I stepped out and said, okay, Lord, I, I, I drove up here. And, and again, if you've been following this podcast or you know me personally, you know this story. But as I came up here to Michigan just to pray and to say, okay, Lord, what is, is this, is this your seed right now that is potentially being planted within me? And also, Lord, help my soil be in, in, in a place that it responds if this is of you. And as I came up here and, and I just visited Michigan, I didn't know anybody at that time, the Lord overwhelmed my heart and he made it very clear that he wanted me to move up here. And so as that process happened between May of 2016 all the way to September 1st when I moved up here, the Lord would call me moment by moment to little moments of obedience. And even before that period of time, even before that, there was moments of obedience as well. But whatever it was, there was there's moments of obedience. All of a sudden, I move up here. One of the things that I think about often, especially after I moved up here, was that everything I can see with my eyes, that I can feel with my, with my flesh, everything I can feel within my heart of up here in Michigan, I would have missed all of it if it wasn't for that seed of the Lord saying, Lord, Jonah, I want you to do this. And me responding through obedience, through the strength of the Holy Spirit. It wasn't through my own strength or my own understanding. On my own understanding, it didn't make sense. In my own strength, I didn't know how I can do what, I, what it is I felt the Lord calling me to do. So it wasn't through my own strength. It wasn't through my own obedience, but it's through the power of the Holy Spirit. But in between the seed, meaning the soil, there's another thing happening of the Lord shining a light and helping me see where he was. So when any crop is grown and not only takes a seed not only takes soil but it also takes sunlight and so I was thinking about that and I went for a walk if you're anything like me during this whole quarantine thing it's just been oh you know I talked about last episode you know just like there's 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 something that happens when we get outside of these four walls you know and for me I like to go out by the water I like to just be out in nature. And so I did that. I went out. I was just kind of meditating on what it was that the Lord was showing me about pursuit and about him and obedience and all of that. And so I'm going out for a walk. And as I was going for a walk, the sun was kind of setting. So, you know, you know how it is usually when you're probably coming home from work, but you, you ever know that time where the sun is just hitting you right in the eyes. It's overwhelming. It's like you have to put on sunglasses or you have to, if you're driving, you have to put that visor down. But, but you know when you're so overwhelmed by sunlight that it's just blinding. That's what was happening as I went for this walk. So here I am. I'm walking. I'm praying. I'm thinking. I'm, I'm listening to music. I'm trying to reflect on everything the Lord has been showing me throughout that day. And here's the light blinding me. But as I was walking, I was also overwhelmed by the light and and just a reminder of what the Bible says in the book of Revelation, that when we are in the kingdom of heaven, when we're in heaven, when we're face to face with our creator, savior, and sustainer, that there won't be any sunlight. Why? Because any light that we see is from Jesus himself. And 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 Revelation also talks about there's not even any shadows in heaven. There's no darkness at all in heaven. And so we're created in the image of our creator who permeates light. There's no darkness in him at all. And we long for that light to come when we are going through the difficulties, the the the, the fears, the anxieties, the worries, the doubts, the confusions, the, the the lows, the difficulties, the trials, the challenges. We long for a light, something to help awaken us to the big picture, to get us out of that funk. And here I am, the light's hitting me in the face. I'm just thinking, Lord, wow, you know, your light is strong. You are strong. But then it goes on, I go through, I go home, and 
And I try to go to bed at that point, and I go to bed, but then I wake up really early. Have you ever had those restless nights where you just can't go to sleep, or, or, or you, or you go to sleep for a little bit, but wake up really early and can't go back to sleep? That was the night that I had, and so I just had all that days of experience and all this stuff, and meditating on the seed and soil and everything, and all of a sudden I'm here and I can't go back to sleep. So I'm just kind of praying. I'm like, oh Lord, help me go back to sleep. Help me go back to sleep. But before you knew it, 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 by this time, the sun started rising. So I got out of bed and, and I went by the window and I saw this beautiful sunrise come up. And then it hit me as well that, okay, Lord, you are Lord even through the sun sets and the sun rising. But in the darkness, we long, we long for there to be day again. Every single day is a reminder through the sunlight that he is not finished with us. He's not finished with us. He's given us another day. The Bible says that his mercies are new every morning. And so even when we mess up when it comes to obedience or even when we're wrestling and we're trying to discern, Lord, where are you in this difficulty that I'm going through? I feel like I'm walking through so many clouds. I can't see any light at all. Every time that we're walking through that, the Lord is faithful each and every day to continue pursuing after our heart and shining a light on that same heart that often sometimes I know speaking for myself is, is hostile to what he is calling me to do. So I went from looking to the sunrise, I went here to this room right where I'm sitting right here right now, and I tried to spend time in his word. And as I was doing that, a a song came up um, on on my phone. I I try to listen to music. Music is really important to me. So the song started playing, and it's a song by Brandon Heath. It's called Wait and See. This song specifically is very special to me because I remember when I was younger listening to this song. And just even before I knew the Lord, just having a moment where it just clicked that there is so much more than where I was at currently. And so I'm sitting here, I'm listening to that song, I'm just thinking about it, and and I watch the music video, and in the music video, uh, Brandon takes these different people and he takes them to a telescope, and they look up into the sky, but as they look up to the sky, they have this revelation of what the Lord has planned for them. And the whole idea of the song is that, Lord, you are not finished with me yet. When the seed of God's word meets the soil of our heart, it also takes his strength, his spirit, to do a work and wonder. So it takes seed, soil, and sunlight. And so I want to talk about that sunlight here right now. And so this is what I wrote down as I was just looking at that sunrise after a restless night. This is what I wrote. I said, oh, the sunrise after a restless night. Salvation for the heavy-hearted and the weary traveler. Sitting here and thinking about the song and video, wait and see, and the message is so true. My longings, restlessness, struggles, strivings find their rest in you. The beauty of the sunrise is your commitment to make all things new and to make all things whole. Whether it's the sun of a sunset where the blinding light reminds us of its strength, or it's the sunrise that gently sobers us up and awakens us with the mercies that are new. Your light pierces the night. Lord, forgive me for using you to point to me, both directly and indirectly. Lord, it is your light that we need to see, not any dim flickering of neon signs of me. My mind goes back to winter camp this year where you showed me your kingdom coming through a picture of grace through a conversation with a student. After that long day, all I desired was to be in your presence. That is all I desired. My mind also goes to fall 2012 at Bethel Camp with the the kids from Temple Zion Baptist Church. Oh, what mattered more in that moment was not sleep, but pillow fights, wrestling, and telling them about the kingdom of God. And that wasn't just deposited through my own strength, but is deposited through love, mercy, and sacrifice. There's something so delicate about a sunrise, like a flickering of a candle. It's easy to take something for granted when it is on display full force. It's only when we start to lack what once was so abundant that we cry for an abundance and our eyes and hearts are open to the power and magnitude of that which we are desperate for and crave. Maybe this is the season where you are leading us through now, Lord. You withdraw some of our abundances You remind us from whom all light shines and flows from. In the absence of light, 
We cry out in this darkness, yet you remind us that darkness has no substance of its own. There's a light burning bright within those who have surrendered their lives to you. Brands and names crumble in your light. Images and vanity evaporate as you bring your light to us. Help me, help us not so easily forget the moments of soberness and clarity where nothing hinders your light from reaching our once hardened hearts. Garbage in, garbage out. Shine a light on the darkness and the garbage that we have tolerated within our hearts. Jesus, you are a treasure of greater value than our questions, regrets, or fears. Reckless abandon is not reckless when you know the value of what you abandon compared to what you gain. Obedience to you is a bright, undulterated light that is blinding in a world so hollow and dark. Shine an ultraviolet spotlight on our selfishness and sinfulness. We are a new creation in you, Jesus. We are a new creation, a mere reflection in a foggy mirror that day by day your spirit is cleaning and you are renewing and remaking that once was broken and lost but is now found and cradled. We long for that which we don't yet fully see, but the dim shadows of your glory burn through the hardest and the hardest of times and the darkness of the dungeons within our hearts. Lord Jesus, have your will and way within us. Strip us of anything that is not of you. When you are all that we have, we have all that we truly need. And I was reminded of Jesus' words in Matthew 13, verse 43. This is what he says. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in their father's kingdom. Anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. May his word penetrate our hearts during this season and even after this season. May we be be just completely desperate for him in a way that maybe we have never experienced. And sometimes that only comes through us abandoning the soil which we think is good for a soil that holds a treasure of much greater value. May we ask the hard questions. What am I partaking in? What does my life amount to? Am I, am I having a life centered around me or is my life centered around my creator, savior, sustainer that wants to do a work and wonder within me that goes far beyond anything this world can offer? I've shared a lot from this author before, but Mike Donahue, the lead singer for 10th Avenue North, In his autobiography, he writes this, a simple yes to God is like rebuilding Eden. To be fully alive is to fully die. I love this quote. A simple yes to God is like rebuilding Eden. Heavy heart, we are in a broken, broken world. And apart from Jesus, our hearts are broken and selfish. But when we respond to his word with a yes, he can rebuild within us what we once thought was lost. He can, he can and he will renew and, and remake and redeem even the ugliest of situations. May we not cling to soil of our own strength or our own understanding or what we deem to be good, but may we take our soil and if there's anything within our soil that the Lord is trying to call us to give up and to surrender, may we say yes, why? Because there is a treasure within the soil that he's calling us to that far exceeds the value of that which we once had. The harvest that he wants to do within you goes way beyond the harvest that you can see now. May we not long for what once was, but may we long for what is. And may we respond today with a heart of obedience saying, Lord, have your will and way in me. Lord, I do not want to have anything that hinders me from experiencing your light shining fully within my life and within my heart. So heavy heart, it would be an honor for me to pray for you. Again, no matter what you are going through, the best of times, the worst of times, we are in this together. I am not better than you. There is nothing about me that goes goes any bit above you at all. If anything, I am low. I am low. Why? Because I am in desperate need of my Savior just like you are. We are in this together. And apart from the Holy Spirit working within us, there's nothing of eternal value that can happen within us. So here, I would love to pray for you, to pray for us as we walk into this unknown season. And as we ask the Lord, Lord, shine fully within the soil of our hearts to allow the seed of your word to have a harvest that goes far beyond anything I could do on my own. So here, let's pray. Lord God, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you that everything that we walk in through this life 
as a illustration of a kingdom that is not this kingdom, but a kingdom to come. Lord, help us align with you and not have anything clouding the heart within us that you have given. Lord, if there's any sin or, or anything that is trapping us or ensnaring us, we rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Lord, shine a light on us. Help us have the courage to expose it, to be honest, to be transparent, to have integrity. Lord, help us be honest with you. Help us respond to you. Jesus, we need you. Have your will and way in our hearts. So when the seed of your word meets the soil of our heart, your light permeates and produces a harvest that nothing on our own can produce. Jesus, please use us for yours. In your name we pray and we surrender. Amen. Heavy heart, you are not alone. May we respond today. God bless you. I look forward to talking to you next week. I'll see you later.